Assalamu alaikum. The purpose of this video is to convince every Muslim to start his own da'wah project right now. This is a very important topic, so please sacrifice a couple of minutes from your time to hear this. Because this is a command from God that most of us totally ignore, or even never heard about. While doing that, I will also answer the following questions. Is da'wah an obligation, a fard on every Muslim? Is it only for scholars or is it a command from God to every Muslim? Should Muslims leave people alone or should they always offer advice? Should I work on myself first to be perfect and then offer advice? Should I learn to be a sheikh first before I start doing da'wah? I don't have enough knowledge, I focus on my career as an engineer or a lawyer. Am I obligated to do da'wah too? Why don't Muslims accept liberal values, like the harm principle for example? People should be free to act however they wish unless their actions cause harm to someone else. Why don't Muslims just live and let live? Why don't Muslims tolerate other cultures? Why don't Muslims believe in freedom? I get annoyed when someone tells me what to do. I'm not a child to be given advice from random people every day. How to tell them to stop? Again, this topic is very important to every Muslim because there might be a fart that you've been ignoring all your life. So bring your coffee and let's start. Throughout the history of humanity, from Adam to Muhammad, peace and blessing upon both of them, God sent messengers and prophets to do da'wah, sometimes even multiple prophets to the same group of people, like in chapter Yasin or in the stories of the children of Israel. The burden of delivering God's message to people was on the prophets and messengers, until Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. The job of regular people was just to obey God and obey the messenger, that's it. But our time is different, our ummah is different. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, was the last prophet. No more prophets or messengers to deliver the words of God to the world. Then who will deliver it? Good question. The burden of inviting people to the truth and delivering the message of God now became on you, on every Muslim of us. This is what makes us different. Read with me Quran chapter 3 verse 110. You are the best ummah ever raised to humanity. You advise towards good and against bad and you believe in Allah. Notice that the only difference between us and any other ummah is da'wah. This is what makes us the best ummah. All Muslims are ordered to finish the work of the prophets by advising to good and against bad. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we are messengers. I'm saying we should continue the work of the messengers. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, Deliver my message even if all you can deliver is one verse. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him also said, Advise good and against bad, or Allah will send punishment on you. Advise good and against bad, or Allah will not accept your dua. God said in Quran chapter 103, I swear by time, all mankind is in a loss. Everyone is surely in a continuous state of loss, except those who do four things. Believe, do good deeds, Advise other people to the truth. Advise other people to patience. If someone is not doing all four, this someone is in a state of loss. The difference between number three and number four is Number three, advise people who are not following the truth, i.e. disbelievers, to learn about the truth. But number four, advise people who already know the truth but they are weak against their sins, they can't control themselves and they fall into haram a lot, advise them to have more patience and self-control. This is both types of da'wah, da'wah to non-Muslims and da'wah to Muslims. Next is Quran chapter 41 verse 33. Whose words are better than someone who calls others to Allah? does good and says I am truly one of the Muslims. See how da'wah is always added to belief and good deeds? 
the prophet peace and blessing be upon him said man ra'a minkum munkaran falyughayyirhu biyadihi fa in lam yastati' fa bi lisanihi fa in lam yastati' fa bi qalbihi wa dhalika adhafu al-iman whoever amongst you sees an evil he must change it with his hand if he is unable to do so then with his tongue and if he is unable to do so then with his heart and this is the weakest from the faith notice how strength in da'wa is related to strength in faith After you hear this hadith, can you say, I live my life and mind my own business? You can't, right? Quran chapter 16 verse 125 Invite all to the way of your Lord with wisdom and kind advice and debate with them in the best manner. The words call them and debate them are very clear in the verse. Quran chapter 28 verse 87 Wad'u ila rabbika wa la takawnanna min al-mushrikeen Offer da'wa to all to the way of your Lord, and never be one of the polytheists. Quran chapter 12 verse 108 قُلْ هَيْذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Say, this is my way, I offer da'wah, me and all of those who follow me. Quran chapter 66 verse 6 O believers, protect yourself and your family from a fire whose fuel is people and stone. The verse clearly indicates your responsibility to advise your family to not only protecting yourself from hellfire, also protect your family. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, Everyone who witnesses my message should deliver it to whoever is absent. Quran chapter 51 verse 55 Continue to remind, for certainly reminders benefit the believers. Quran chapter 20 verse 132 وأمر أهلك بالصلاة واستبر عليها and command your people to pray and patiently adhere to it. Check this fatwa from islamqa.info Because it has a lot of evidence, I will only read the summary. Whoever had the opportunity to deliver the message of God and didn't deliver it, at least as much as he can, has committed a sin. Did you know that da'wah is jihad? Unfortunately, because of media influence, a lot of people associate jihad with war. And that is absolutely incorrect. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim said, There are two types of jihad. The easy one, the jihad with your hands and tongue, and a lot of people are doing it. And the hard one, the hard one is jihad with evidence and debate. And this one is superior because of its great benefit, and its difficulty, and the abundance of its opponents. This was his comment on Quran chapter 25 verse 52. So do not obey the disbelievers and do jihad against them with the Quran. When Ibn Abbas was asked about the same verse, may God be pleased with both of them, he said, Do jihad with Quran, jihad by da'wah. Al Hassan al Basri once said, Certainly a man could be doing a lot of jihad without lifting one sword once in his life. Again, referring to the jihad by da'wah. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, Jihadu al-mushrikina bi amwalikum wa anfusikum wa al-sinatikum. So do jihad against the disbelievers with your money, with your souls, and with your tongues. The third one refers to da'wah. One man asked the Prophet, What is the best type of jihad? The Prophet answered, the best type of jihad is saying the truth in front of an oppressive ruler. So don't be afraid to say the full truth when you're doing your da'wah. A man asked the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, tell me something else that I can do other than jihad, that has the same reward. The Prophet answered, there isn't any. Then the Prophet said, can you stand in prayer in mosque all the time, never rest, and fast all the time, never eat? The man said, of course not. No one can do that. From this hadith, we understand that there is nothing you can do that is equal to jihad. Another man came to the Prophet and asked him, What is the best deed? The Prophet answered, Believing in Allah and jihad. Quran chapter 4 verse 95 They are not equal. The ones who stay at home avoiding harm and struggle and the ones who do jihad. Quran chapter 9 verse 19 do you consider providing the pilgrims with water and maintaining the sacred mosque is equal to believing in Allah and the last day and doing jihad? They are not equal in Allah's sight, and Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. 
Quran chapter 29 verse 69 and those who do jihad in our cause we will surely guide them along our way and Allah is certainly with the good doers and this one is what motivated me the most the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said whoever did da'wah to good will get a copy of the good deeds that will be done because of his da'wah without decreasing anything from their reward imagine people who did da'wah 1400 years ago for example Abu Bakr al-Siddiq he has in his balance a copy of all the good deeds of most of the Muslims until the day of judgment he gets a copy of your good deeds when you pray and read Quran and do charity you can have the same reward if you want you just have to start doing da'wah today and finally this hadith promising protection from hellfire for anyone who does jihad if you're not doing da'wah you're missing out a lot it's very clear that da'wah is a command from god but the question is is it for the ayn or for the kifaya before i answer this question some of the viewers might not know the difference between Fardain and Fard Kifaya so let me explain it very quickly Fardain is like the five daily prayers everyone has to do them or will be punished otherwise but Fard Kifaya is different Fard Kifaya is like being a doctor for example if enough people from the Ummah are doctors then no one will be punished but if no one is doing it and there is a shortage in doctors and people are dying from disease then the whole Ummah will be punished for it Another example, participating in the army training. If enough people are doing it, you don't have to. But if there is a shortage and not enough people are doing it, then everyone is a sinner. This is Fard Kifaya and Da'wah is Fard Kifaya. We know that from Quran chapter 3 verse 104. A group of you should do Da'wah, call to good and against bad. And those are the successful ones. Now you should ask yourself, are there enough people doing it or are they very few and getting overwhelmed by the enemies of Islam? And the reality is, from the two billion Muslims, all I can see now are a couple of hundred men defending Islam and doing da'wah. From two billion Muslims, at least in the English language. And on the other side, billions of dollars are being invested in spreading atheism, degeneracy and destroying fitrah. Almost all media outlets focus on spreading adultery and materialism and destroying the family values. Almost all songs are undercover pornography. Islamophobia is pushed by the Western media all over the world, spreading lies about Islam and deviating people away from it. We even have Arabic channels attacking Islam 24-7. If you go to this channel's official website and go to About Us page, it publicly says it is funded by the CIA and its goal is to protect society from religious beliefs. It's not a conspiracy theory, it's public information on their official website. The new religion of liberalism is now being shoved down our throats in every way possible. They are making da'wah for our kids to normalize adultery and even worse, to be as colorful as possible. It is being done in schools and parents can't refuse. Undercover Hinduism and pantheism is being spread hiding behind yoga and meditation. Even direct Satan worshipping is spreading now. If you don't believe that, just search for reports about channeling and you will be shocked. Not every father and mother can guard their children against this brutal attack on their fitrah. Some fathers and mothers barely have time to make a living under the raising prices. While they are teaching their children in schools that they are just apes and there is no God. In schools. When you open YouTube, you find a Christian and an atheist in the same stream. You think they will be debating each other. No, they don't. They spend the whole stream just attacking Islam. You wonder, doesn't one of them believe in God and the other doesn't? Why don't they debate each other? Not even one minute. Their whole stream is just attacking Islam and spreading lies and they get millions of views. While all of that is happening, a couple of hundred Muslims are defending Islam against this tornado. Do you think they are enough and you are not obligated to help? Or do you think that every Muslim will be asked about his laziness, about ignoring the jihad at the time his ummah needs him the most? Ali ibn Abi Talib once said, when the people of truth stopped defending the truth, the people of falsehood thought they were correct. 
isn't that exactly what is happening now? Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah once said, whoever does not participate in saying the truth is a speechless shaitan. Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim once said, he has no good, he has no religion. The one who sees the limits of God being mocked and violated and does not defend it. Whoever sees the sunnah of the prophet being abandoned and was okay with that happening. At that time, the one who's not doing da'wah with his tongue is a speechless shaitan. The same way a person who invites to falsehood is a talking shaitan. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz once said, Da'wah becomes far the ayn on you if you are in a situation where there is not enough alternatives. And in most countries in the world today, there isn't. The ummah needs your help. How much da'wah is enough? Instead of directly answering this question, I will make a quick comparison between the life of Prophet Noah and the life of Prophet Jonah, peace and blessing upon both of them. Prophet Noah, like every one of us, was asked to deliver God's message to disbelievers. Same situation you are in right now, commanded to advise to good and against bad. Let's read what happened to him in Quran chapter 71. He kept giving da'wah to the same people for 950 years. He cried, My Lord, I have surely called my people day and night, but my calls only made them run farther away. And whenever I invite them to be forgiven by you, they press their fingers on their ears, cover themselves with their clothes, persist in denial, and act very arrogantly. Did he give up? No. Then certainly I called them openly. Then surely I preached to them publicly and privately saying, seek your Lord forgiveness, for he is truly most forgiving. Now let me ask you a question. If you're giving da'wah to someone every day for the past one month, and there is no hope in him, every time you talk to him, he becomes even more arrogant. Your da'wah has a negative effect. Will you continue or will you give up? What about two months? What about one year? When will you give up? The Prophet, Noah, peace and blessing be upon him, kept giving da'wah for 950 years. Imagine. Do you know why he didn't give up? Because you're thinking about da'wah from worldly perspective. You think that the purpose of giving da'wah is to convince others to be better. Well, yes, this is one of the goals, but this is definitely not the main goal. The main goal is to obey a direct command from God. God asked you to do da'wah, you do da'wah, only seeking his reward. Doesn't matter if you succeed or not. Once I heard a sheikh explaining this concept to simple construction workers. His explanation was brilliant. It was very easy to understand. He said, imagine if I offered you a job to carry 500 bricks up the stairs and put them on the roof of my building. And I will pay you $500 for that. Will you do it? One of them said, yes, I will do it. Then the sheikh said, what if after you finished and I paid you your $500, I went on the roof and I threw all of them on the street again. Then the next day I asked you to carry them up the stairs again and I will give you another $500. Will you agree? The guy said, ah, now I understand. As long as I'm getting paid every day, I don't really care that my work has no result. This is exactly why you should be doing da'wah all your life. Results don't matter. What matters is every time you give advice to someone, to good or against bad, God writes it down and you will be rewarded for it. Don't worry much about what will happen after that, doesn't matter if it works or not. You can fully understand this concept when you read the story of the prophet Jonah. It is the exact opposite. Every time we read a prophet's story in the Quran, it ends up with God punishing the disbeliever. Except in the story of Jonah, God this time punished the prophet himself, not his people. Did you ever think about that? The mistake that Jonah, peace and blessing be upon him, did is he gave up on his people. He made the same mistake a lot of Muslims are doing now. He gave da'wah to his people several times, again and again, in every way possible. Then he reached a point when he said, I give up on you. There is no hope in you. And then he left. God punished him for this by being inside the whale for three days until he acknowledged his sin. And he asked forgiveness from God saying, La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimin. 
There is no God but you. Glory and perfection be to you. I was one of the transgressors. Then God forgave him and saved him from the stomach of the whale. His sin was that he thought about the results. He treated da'wah with dunya logic. Then he gave up. So don't ever think about the results. Keep doing da'wah all your life, whether you see results or not. Okay, I understand that I should help, but how can I help? Perfect question. If you have knowledge of Islam, give da'wah to whoever is around you, your family, your friends, your neighbors. Go online, go on social media platforms, start teaching everyone the message of God. Dedicate part of your life to doing that. If it's just one or two hours per day, that is enough. If you still don't have knowledge, also do da'wah. Do da'wah while seeking knowledge. The Prophet's orders were very clear. Deliver my message even if you can only deliver one verse. If you have language, translate. Translate from Arabic to English or from English to your own language. There are people in a lot of countries who do not have any content about Islam at all. Zero contents. So start translating right now. If you don't have the skills to talk publicly or if you're shy to do so, support someone who is doing it. Learn how to edit videos and offer to edit for someone who can talk. Or learn other supporting skills. For example, in order for one video like this to be made, we need people to collect verses and hadith and fatwas. We need people to translate all of that to English. We need a spokesperson to talk in front of the camera. We need a studio to shoot in. We need video editors to finish the editing. We need a thumbnail creator. We need to do search engine optimization for the video to appear in search. We need someone to revise the contents and check for mistakes. And then we need to do a lot of advertisements to spread it for the world to listen. If you can do any of these tasks, offer your help. You can contact me using the Discord link under the video. I will try to introduce you to other brothers and sisters who are also starting their Dawa project. You can cooperate with them. If you have the money, support financially. Pay for the YouTube advertisements, for example. It costs hundreds of dollars per video to be seen by a decent number of people. And the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, whoever supported a man who is doing jihad financially is as if he has taken part in the jihad himself. If you don't want to do that, I have an idea. These videos are copyright free. You have full permission to download them and re-upload them to your channel and run ads on your own channel. This permission applies to all of our videos. Women in Islam series, Sharia Law Simplified series, Islam Q&A series, Did You Read the Bible series, our videos defending Islam from terrorism claims, and our next series, inshallah, that we will dedicate to answering Islamophobes and refuting them, it will also be free. Just download them and upload them wherever you want. Our main goal is to reach as many people as possible. If you can't do any of that, you can't do research, you can't talk, you can't edit, you can't translate, you can't finance, you can't do anything. At least every time you find a da'wah video, any Islamic content, make sure you leave it running until the end, even if you're not watching. Don't close the video in the middle because YouTube only recommends videos that people watch fully. Also, engagements help a lot. Any engagement, for example, just write Subhanallah in the comments or like it and share it on your Facebook page or whatever. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا Do not consider any act of goodness to be insignificant, even if it was small. If this is only what you can do, then do it. When you're able to do more, do more. Now let's address some misconceptions. Fix yourself first. You can't offer advice to people as long as you're doing sins yourself. This made-up rule is absolutely wrong. Let me tell you why. The only ma'asum, sinless person in our ummah is the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him. No one else other than him is perfect. And all the verses and hadith that we read together in this video are ordering all Muslims to give da'wah, not only the sinless of them. You just have to apply two rules to be correct and not fall into hypocrisy. Rule number one is, don't think you are above the rules when you are a da'i. If you advise people to pray on time, advise yourself too. If you advise people to do sunnah, advise yourself too. You're not an exception. Rule number two is, ask people to follow the Prophet, not to follow you. For example, I have a sin of my own. I sometimes don't take care of what I eat. I consume junk food and sugars and candies, which made me overweight. 
But if you see my video sunnah of eating halal food, I am saying that it is haram to ruin your health with eating junk food all the time. I'm not asking people to follow me or to be like me. I am acknowledging my sin and I'm asking people to follow the Prophet, not me. If you apply both of these rules, you are doing da'wah correctly. And don't wait until you become perfect first because you will never be. Misconception number two. Advice should only be given from father to son or from sheikh to a layman or from higher person to a lower person in terms of knowledge and righteousness. And that is absolutely wrong. A man came to Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, and that was after he became the Khalifat, the president of the Muslim Ummah. In front of everybody, the man told him, Umar, you should fear Allah. People immediately said, what are you saying? You are saying to the leader of the believers, you should fear Allah? Are you crazy? Then Omar said, let him say it. This advice is the best speech to be said. There is no good in you if you don't give advice and there is no good in me if I don't accept it. Everyone should be giving advice and everyone should accept it. If you think that you are higher than being given advice, this is arrogance, brother. And you should be worried because the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر He will not enter paradise The one who has an atom's weight of arrogance in his heart But I should also mention that people should learn how to give advice wisely and kindly Advice is like a vase that is filled with flowers If you give it to someone in his hands with a smile he will appreciate it But if you throw it in someone's face it will just hurt him. Giving advice is a skill that you should learn. Misconception number three. Everyone is free as long as he doesn't hurt others. So live and let live. I find a lot of Muslims repeating this as if it was a fact. I understand their situation because this concept has been pushed on us for a long time in all the movies and all Western media. And sometimes in our own media too. This concept comes from liberalism, not from Islam. It looks nice, but it is the source of all degeneracy. Our rule is the exact opposite. No one is free. We are slaves of Allah. We are ibadul Rahman. We don't worship our desires. We worship Allah and we obey him in every aspect of life. What determines the limits of our freedom is Sharia law, not whether you hurt others or not. Let me give you an example. If you eat pork, you will not hurt others. But you're not free to eat pork. Do you know why? Because you're not free. You are a slave of Allah. God said in Quran chapter 9 verse 111. Inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah. Allah has indeed purchased from the believers their lives and their wealth in exchange for paradise. It is a simple trade. Your whole life and your whole wealth in exchange for paradise. So if you want to smell the fragrance of paradise, understand that you don't own your life anymore and you're not free unless within the boundaries that God allowed you. And the concept of live and let live is against the concept of da'wah. One of them is from Satan and the other is a direct command from God to you. Don't let movies play with your beliefs. And by the way, the same people who are asking you to stop giving da'wah, stop giving advice, are doing their own da'wah in their media, in their schools, to our children. But you know what? They only want our children to listen to them, not to us. In the end, I want to say that God promised that his religion will prevail anyway. It will happen with or without you. You just have the opportunity to participate in helping the message of God spread to humanity. It's an opportunity for you to get some of the reward. If you're lazy or decide not to do it, Islam is already expanding all over the world, with or without you. Even atheist institutions like Pew Research, for example, are saying that Islam is the fastest growing religion. This is an animated chart showing the growth of Islam over the past years. After all of these lies from Western media, after all of these attacks, after all of this fitna, it is spreading and it is spreading fast. They spend millions to delude people away from Allah and to cause them to drown in their desires. And in the end, truth wins. Fitra overpowers all these lies. Read with me Quran chapter 8 verse 36. 
إن الذين كفروا ينفقون أموالهم ليصدوا عن سبيل الله فسينفقونها ثم تكون عليهم حسرة ثم يغلبون Surely the disbelievers will spend their wealth to hinder others from the path of Allah They will spend it and then it will become a source of their regret then they will be defeated and the disbelievers will be driven to hellfire The question is to you now Do you want to be one of the soldiers of Allah or do you want to waste your time playing video games or watching Netflix? Quran chapter 9 verse 38 O believers, what is the matter with you? Whenever you are asked to sprint forward in the cause of Allah you pretend that you're heavy and cling to the land under you Are you satisfied with this life? Do you prefer it over the hereafter? Know that the enjoyment of this life is nothing compared to what I prepared for you in the next. Of course, you know what you should do with this video. Millions of Muslims really need to hear this. Share it with your friends and help it spread by engaging with it with likes and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia law, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch more Q&A videos like this one, check out this playlist down there. Thanks and salam alaikum.